So let's talk about the PEL procedure, right? So out of the FTI, what is the PEL procedure? Uh, PEL procedure is um, uh, the the ELP. No, the PEL uh, procedure. PEL procedure. The ELP is a path. Okay. Um, PEL procedure in the FTI is um, just turn the nearest air field. Turn. Climb or accelerate to 125 climb knots and uh, gear flap speed break up. So turn, turn, climb, plane. Anything else? And then um, I think it goes right into explaining. Mm, you know, it's more. It's more. Oh, oh yeah. uh, check and then bit. check, bit. Okay, what's after that? And then you got determine, deduce. Excuse me. Determine, deliver. Um, and this determine, deliver. Uh, Break out that FTI, that FTI, right? What's the say in the FTI? Turn, climb or accelerate, clean, check, uh, boost pump, ignition, plan. Yeah. Um, de determine the duty runway. So I determine. Deliver um, simulated or actual deliver. emergency voice report. Mm -hmm. um, reduce power four to six mm -hmm. once data is reached. Reduce. Lower the landing gear, uh, report on the ICS, uh, the before landing checklist. Ah, okay. So NATOPS just says turn, climb, clean, right? So, sure. Well, who's NATOPS written for? Um, winged aviator, right? Yes, sir. Are you a winged aviator? No, sir. No, and that's why we created an FTI, flight training instruction to take guys who aren't winged aviators and turn them into winged aviators, okay? We give you the FTI, so are you naturally going to know that you need to descend or to lower your gear or to get the landing checklist done or where to go? Um, not. No, right? Uh, instruction. But why not? I mean, well, really, what's the only difference between me and you as pilots? Experience. Experience, right? I mean, I got over 2,000 plus hours experience, right? Compared to zero. So therefore, as a NATOPS winged aviator, because I have that experience, I know that as I, I'm going to turn, climb, clean, I'm going to check my airplane, determine the duty run, well, I mean, BIP, you know, do I need to boost pump ignition switch and plan? That may or may not be based on the aircraft, but I know I need to determine the, the duty runway I need to land on. I know I need to deliver an emergency call. I know I need to reduce my power because i got to get down. I know i got to drop my gear. I'm not going to land gear up. And I gotta report that gear down or report high key or something to someone prior to landing my airplane. So I naturally know that as a NATOP swing aviator that you don't necessarily know, simply because you hadn't had the experience of flying. So it's very important then that you know the full FTI procedure. Because if you don't, like we talked about when you centralize, organize, memorize, and practice your stuff, if you're really thinking, right? How much time does that give you to fly a plane? Zero. Right. And therefore your flight performance is not going to be very good. Make sense? Sure. Okay. So we're going to talk about the PEL procedure in a couple of different segments, okay? And the first one is basically turning and climbing, all right? And at what point are we going to descend? When we have uh, data. Aha, uh -huh, when we have data. Okay, we're going to talk about that. So I want you to imagine, hey, here's two miles, four, six, eight, ten miles from the field, right? So I'm going to Bruton today. What is my high key altitude at Bruton? It's 31 to 37. Mm, 32 to 37. Say what? What's high key AGL? 3,000 feet. 3,000. So add fill elevation to that would be, would be so what? it's thirty two hundred. Mm, what's fill elevation of white? Ah, excuse me, Th that's two hundred feet. So Bruton is thirty one. Ah, okay, all right, three thousand one hundred feet, right? Sir. Sure. Okay, cool. So let's say I'm flying home on Core Shoals. I'm going home Five Lakes. What altitude should I be at coming home Five Lakes Core Shoals? Coming right into Five Lakes. Are we? We hadn't hit the southern power line slash. Yeah, so we're at 4,500. 4,500 feet. Okay, cool. 
And sure enough, just as I hit five lakes, I'm heading southbound towards the southern power line slash, oh my gosh, I get a chip line. And I'm determined I'm 10 miles out. So I'm at 4,500 feet, but if I needed to make Dega and I'm 10 miles out, what altitude do I need to be to make sure I hit high key See, at 10 um, miles? Do some quick Marine Corps math. Um, you need to be about well, 8,100 feet. All right, how'd you come up with that? The one half DME plus your key. So okay. to, make, to so make high key. So 10 divided by two equals? Five. Five, right? Add that, my high key to it, 3.1, 8.1K, right? So and I agree, 8,100 feet, right? Right, so 10 divided by two, pretty easy, right? You agree with that? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely, cool. All right, well, hey, what do I, what altitude do I need to be at six miles? Uh, you need to be 6,100 feet. Okay, I agree with that. What about two miles? You need to be 4,100. Okay, cool. What about eight miles? Eight miles would be 7,100. Starting to see a trend here? Yes, sir. How about four miles? You need to be 5,100. All right, cool, yeah, I figured you'd get that right. All right, so here I am, 4,500 feet, coming home, course rules, and I get that chip light, right? So procedure you said was what? Turn, climb, clean. So I'm going to start turning, climbing, cleaning, check, okay? What airspeed am I climbing at? Uh, 125. Or airspeed what? you're climbing, um, that's climb rate is 140. Ah, okay, so I'm climbing at 140 knots, right? So approximately how many miles am I going a minute? You're going a little over two miles a minute. Okay. All right, and how did you get that? Um, 60 miles an hour is one mile a minute, so divide that by. So 140 is close enough to 60, right? It's approximately two miles, right? Sure. Cool. Did you agree with that? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. So we're doing two miles a minute. So. Here I'm at 10, I'm going to 8, so I can estimate that a minute later I'm going to be at 8 miles, right? Well, guess what? A minute later I'm at, you know, 6,500 feet. Have I met Dega yet? No, sir. No, I haven't, right? So I'm going to keep climbing, right? A minute later, where am I going to be? You're going to be 6 miles out. 6 miles out, right? And oh my gosh, I'm at, you know, 7,800 feet. Have I made Dega? Yes, sir. Man, I overclimbed, right? So, what am I telling you to do? As you walk fly, right, you need to constantly be calculating your data, right? Because if I have a chip light, do I really want to run that engine a long time? Yes, sir. But why not? Because um, it could quit on you at any second. It can quit on you at any second, right? So, we think it's, um, what is a reduction gearbox on a car? It's really a transmission, right? Yes, sir. And I got a little sensor that says, hey, there's a bunch of metal in my transmission. It's starting to eat itself up, right? So do I really want to fly a long period of time? Do I don't want to waste a bunch of time going well over my data? Yes, sir. No, right? Because it's going to take longer. And let's say I come in and I mess up high key. I come in low at any point. Wouldn't it be nice to have an engine than not? So the sooner I can get the high key, the better. So therefore, if I'm over climbing, now I've got to kind of descend down to get to it. Make sense? Yes, sir. Why did I use two, four, six, eight, ten? Why not one, three, five, seven, nine? Because uh, then you start dealing with halves and fractions. Oh, and okay. It. So it's easily divided by two, right? Sure. So let's say I'm coming home and I, I calculate, I get this EP, and I'm at 8.3. How are you going to calculate that? Uh, probably. Just round it to eight, right? Round it it's to just eight. government work, right? We're not to be exact, right? What if I'm at 4.2? Round it to four, and then, then keep in the back of my mind, I need a little bit more altitude for data. What if I, yeah, round it to four. What if I need? What if I'm at seven point six? Round it to eight. Yeah, right, dude. It's not government work. Just get it close to one of these numbers. Do the math. Get your stuff on because again, you're worried. You got a lot of other stuff to be doing, right? You got to fly your plane. So as I'm fly, if I'm flying my plane, is it time for us to solve the world's problems or do the quadratic equation and all that stuff? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe E equals MC squared. Is it time for that? <laughs> no, sir. No, right? Because I'm doing this stuff, right? So we want to quickly get to that answer 
something close enough to get us on profile to get down. Make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. All right, so that's how we hit Dega. That's why we're trying to do all this stuff. So now let's go into more of the pattern itself, right? And hey, we want to get to an airfield. Now, you got the FWAP right out there, right? Yes, sir. So here's Evergreen up here, runway 1 and 1 9. I think it's runway 1028. That's Evergreen, okay? So, Bruton, what are those runways on at Bruton? We have 18 and 36. All right, so 1836, and that's a closed runway, right? Yes, sir. Okay, that one's closed. What else? And then we got 06 and 24. Okay, 06 and 24. And that one's a good runway, right? Yes, sir. What's another runway? And then 12 and 30. Okay, so we got 12, 12 and 30, right? Yes, sir. So I got this funky chicken method here, right? All right, so hey, here we are. We're back at course rules, right? Remember, we're 10 miles out from the runway. And uh, hey, I'm going to do my turn climb clean. I'm heading towards it. I'm getting my dagger, right? Yes, sir. So as I'm coming towards the field, I'm going to turn climb clean, check, see what I have the secondary says. Deter uh, BIP. Do I need to turn on to use the boost pump ignition switch? Yes, my plan's the dagger itself. When do I need to start coming down? Determine. What's that? Determine the duty runway. Oh, okay. Well, how does that sound? I uh, call it the RDO and say Bruton Landing. Okay. Hey, Bruton Landing runway, was it 1 2? 1 2, yes, sir. Bruton Landing runway 1 2, 1 2 acknowledge. What are you going to say? Uh, Bruton Landing 1 2. Okay. So you're heading towards the field, right? Yes, sir. So what's going to come out of your mouth after that? Determine, deliver. Um, what's that deliver? Delivers the the I spy format emergency. Okay. Um, so what's so, that sound like? Uh, we're going. It's going to be um, Bruton RDO. This is Red Knight one two three. Mm -hmm. Got a chip light. Um, X amount of miles uh, to the northeast of Bruton, and um, my intentions are to execute PEL runway one two. Okay. So Bruton RDO Red Knight one two three. Um, I've got a chip light currently six miles to the north at 4,500 feet executing a PEL to runway 12. Roger, 123, you're number one for that. Number one when you get here, call high key. 123, Wilco. Okay, cool. Well, I got three runways I'm looking at here. Uh, you know, which one's, which one's that runway I'm going to? 12, right? So which one is it? Is it this runway? No, it's the bottom runway coming from our. Oh, it's this one, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, so where's high key? Is it down here? No, it's actually, um, thank you. Is it over here? No. Is it here? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So as I'm coming to this field, right, I need to determine which runway it is I'm going to, right? Yes, sir. So I can just go straight to it like this, right, and then go right into the PL, right? No, sir. Oh, what am I going to do? You want to set up to uh, intercept, or excuse yes, intercept um, high key on the runway heading. So I can I can be intercepted the high key this way, right? Negative. Oh no! Uh, oh really? Oh, you have okay. To, you have to come around from the northwest. Oh, so you're saying I need to be heading this direction? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So to do that, as I'm coming to the field, right, I kind of need to kind of make that little less little jog to get into high key, so I'm facing that. Does you make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So it's kind of confusing, isn't it? I mean, I'm gonna be looking down. I'm gonna see all these different runways, and which one is it, right? Because you know, obviously, this is north. So as you walk fly, it's important to think, okay, how am I gonna get into high key? What side of that runway? Hey, that's great. It's runway one two. Do I need to be on the left side or right side? Where do I need to be? We need to be on the runway's left. Yeah, we need to be on the runway's left because it's a right hand PEL, right? Yes, sir. Cool. I agree with that. All right. What if I was going to Evergreen, right? Same thing, right? Yes, sir. As I'm walk flying to it, hey, I'm landing runway one, right? So which one is runway one? That's um, the one going to the north. All right, north south, right? So it's high key here. Negative. Right, It'd be somewhere up here, right? So left, left hand, right hand PL. So here it'd be here, right? So we can do that funky enough. So again, I'd have to think about how am I going to get into it. So it Makes sense. Cool. I agree with that. So as you walk fly, it's important that you kind of 
probably put runways on the ground or something of that nature, act like you're out in the area, because I'm going to love to hit you on course rules. I mean, when I get my check rides, I love to hit a guy, riders are jumping on course rules. Oh my gosh, hey, I didn't have to do a PEL, man, that's great. That's when I'll get you. And then, of course, I'm looking for you to PEL to the next field. All right, good. So let's talk about going to Bruton today. It seems to be the common theme. And uh, we determined we're going to do a right-hand PEL, right? Sure. So what's that altitude need to be at, uh, for high key? 3,100 in Bruton. 3,100 feet, right? Yes, sir. And I'm going to do this funky chicken method coming around here. What's my low key altitude? 1,600. 1,600 feet. Yeah. What is my base key? If you want to, uh, six to 800 AGL. AGL. So seven to 900. Seven to 900. All right, cool. All right, cool. So here I am, I'm coming in the field, I'm about a mile away from the field. Well, let's just do it this way, we'll talk about something else first, we'll come back to that. I'm coming in the airfield and sure enough I get over the field and I'm about like 20, I mean 5,200 feet. I'm right over high key, but I'm at 5,200. Well, am I ready to shoot the PEL yet? Yes, sir. Okay, so how am I going to get down to the field to get down to altitude so I can hit this high key on altitude? Uh, you can circle the runway um, okay. and do the, the different degree angle of bank turns. Okay, so I'm at 5,200 feet here. What angle of bank would I use and all that fun stuff? About 30 degrees. About 30 degrees angle of bank. So I'm going to go this way, right? Yes, sir. Uh, why not? What's wrong with that? Because then you have to, when you're coming around, you'd have to bank back to the right. Oh. And you could... Is it possible, too, that I've now turned my, my back on the field? Yes, sir. Right? So if I kind of goon it up, right, I'm way out here, and oh my gosh, i got to try to get back, right? So I A, can't see the field, and then B, you know, it makes more room for error. So you're saying, hey, I need to turn this way, right? Yes, sir. So if I make a mistake and just kind of keep that turn coming, right? Yes, sir. Wrap it up and just come right back and then hit it. I'd agree with that. Cool. All right. I agree. So what if I happen to be at, I don't know, 4,700 feet here at High Key? What, what would you do? So I'd do... Uh... 45 degree angle. Okay, and I'm at 4,300 feet. And then probably a, a 60 degree okay, angle. Okay, cool. Hey, here I am, I'm a mile away, coming inbound here to my high key. And, you know, I should be, I need to be 3,100 feet here, and you know what, I'm 4,100 feet here, right? Sure. I mean, can I really do a 360? I'm a mile away, right? No. So I can't do a 360. Well, how am I going to get from here to here and still make 3,100 feet? I mean, I'm gear, I'm, I'm, right now my aircraft's clean. Gear up, flaps up, clean, 125. Uh, you can drop your gear. Oh, okay, yeah, I can throw my gear down, right? That's kind of cool, right? Because it increases drag. Well, what else does that help me do, right? Because he told me to report high key, right? Sure. Well, what else can I knock out that time that I drop the gear? Your before landing checklist. Yeah, right? Four landing checklist. Well, that's kind of nice to have done, isn't it? Sure. Because I'm trying to do this method here, fly my airplane. It'd be nice to get that knocked out before I'm starting this whole pattern here, right? Which is a high, more more workload for me. All right, great, cool. What if, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, it's I'm at you know 40, 4,400 feet. I drop my gear and I'm still going to come high into high key, and I got my gear down. What else could you do? Um, you could go to takeoff flaps. Well, we're not really supposed to do takeoff flaps yet. I might gain something up or lose my engine right and not make the field. Is there something else I could do? Or you could slip. I could slip, right? Okay, I could slip. And then if you time permitting, you might be able to get a couple less turns or something in there as well. Because obviously the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Straight line. Well, let's take out the straight line, right? Throw in a couple curves. Cool. I agree with that. All right. So let's talk about this pattern. Why am I doing a PEL to begin with? Uh, because you're you have some sort of emergency that could take away power or has taken away. So some I'm thinking power. I might lose my engine, right? Yes, sir. I agree. And any time the engine could fail, right? Yes, sir. So 
I want you to imagine that, you know, here's high key, low key, and here's the runway here, okay? And so this is obviously my glide path coming down to the runway, okay? If at any time that I am below my glide path, in other words, I'm at, instead of being at 3,100 feet, I'm at 25, or instead of being at 1,600 feet, I'm at 1,200 feet, you know? And I have an engine, how am I going to get back on profile if I have an engine? Uh, the same way you would on a regular landing, you add power and um, adjust your pitch as okay. needed. So I add power and I kind of level off, is that what I want to do? No, you want to add power and get back up as soon as possible oh. in case that engine quits. Oh, so if my engine quits and I just kind of level off, I'm just I'm still not going to make it, right? I'm still going to sure. land short, right? So yeah, exactly. I need to get power, get up there quickly and get back on profile because again, like you said, I might lose an engine. I agree with that. Well, I had a chip light, so how much power do I want to add? As much as you can. Much as, so that I get max power, right? No. Oh, oh okay. Well, why not? Uh, because that much torque on your gearbox most likely. Okay, so it says PCL minimum necessary to intercept the ELP, avoid necessary PCL movements. Well, I definitely need to move the PCL because I'm low, right? Sure. Minimum to ne necessary to intercept the ELP, well, I know if I go max power, I know if I go max power, I might eat the gearbox up sooner, but maybe I should do something in the middle, right? So, approximately what torque am I using in the landing pattern for an old climb? Um, 60 to 70. 60 to 70 percent. So, I'd at least say, hey, let's at least give it 60 to 70 percent. Now, if it did not have enough climb power then, in other words, it's still not climbing, yeah, then I'm going to go all out, right? Because, okay, let's say I don't. My reduction gearbox eats itself up. And I don't go max power and it's not giving me climb power. And if I did, you know, if I did, it would have got me up there. And I lose the engine and then I crash the plane, right? Hey, I saved the reduction gearbox, but I lost the airplane. Well, basically, I lost the reduction gearbox anyway, right? Sure. So I'm going to sacrifice it if I need to, right? But if I don't need to, I'm not going to. That makes sense? Yes, sir. So, yeah, at least probably 60 to 70. Get back on that glide path quick. Unless the performance isn't there, then I'm going to go all out to get back on Dega as soon as possible because I am anticipating an engine failure. Well, I'd agree with that. All right. So, you know what? It's just a bad day. Engine failed. Coming into high key. Here, my engine failed, and I crossed high key at 2,500 feet. Okay, well, I'm still clean. Is there anything I can do here? 2,500 versus 31. Uh, you can roll into a 60-degree angle uh, turn and try to hit. Uh, you might be able to make low key. You'll probably make base key at worst. Well, let's talk about a technique I like to use. You know, you're talking about low key, high key, and you're talking about angle of bank turns, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, I like to fly ground checkpoints over, over just an angle of bank turn in the middle of nowhere. But let's talk about why for a second. If I have an overshooting crosswind, right? Am I typically, if I don't have an engine, am I going to typically be high or low at low key? You're going to be high. Why? Because you, the wind is pushing you out there faster than You bet. Than the wind's the pushing normal. me to it, right? Sure. What if I have an undershooter? Then you're going to be low. Oh, right, because the wind's keeping me from it. Sure. So I know she said, hey, I'm going to roll to a 60 degree angle of bank turn. Well, it's not really looking at a checkpoint on the ground. So a technique that I like to use, and it's pretty effective, is this. Here's your airplane, right? And you know about two-thirds of the wing out is a, is a gas cap. So I'd say about just inside a gas tap, about half a wingtip distance, is a good point. As you come wings level through high key here, if you look down about two-thirds of half a wingtip distance, you are going to find where your, your low-key ground checkpoint is. Okay? So then, that gives you something to say, okay, well, I want to be here facing this direction at 1,600 feet. So if I have an overshooting crosswind, right, I don't have an engine, now I can kind of judge how much angle of bank I need to get here at 1600. It's pretty easy to do, right? Yes, sir. Because all I'm doing here is really I'm looking at my altimeter here and I'm looking outside for my ground track. 
and your airspeed should stay constant. You're still doing the scan, but you're saying, hey, I want to be at this ground checkpoint, this ground checkpoint here at 1,600 feet. Because if you did like you said and you turn at 60 degrees angle of bank, that's great. You're 1,600 feet, but you're in here, right? Sure. So the glide path of the runway that we were talking about, this is the normal glide path. Here's low key 1,600. You're at 1,600 feet, but you're closer, so you're actually here on the energy equation. You're above, in a sense, glide path, even though you aren't, right? But what if you're wide? Where does that put you on a glide path equation? You're below. You're below, right? So if you're here, you might not make the runway because you're too wide, right? Yes, if you're here, you're probably going to overshoot the runway, right? Because it's, it's, you're not going to make that same. You see, you can kind of see here, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make the runway, or is here, I'm going to land short. If I'm too wide, I'm going to land short. So to me, you want to simplify your energy equation by saying, okay, I want to be here, 1,600 feet, there's my ground checkpoint, and all you're doing is judging it coming around. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So, hey, I got it. You're 2,500 feet, you're low. And one thing you did talk about is you said, hey, I'm going to consider increasing my angle of bank, but really what you're wanting to do is probably what? Change geometry. I can just cut the corner, right? Because the shortest distance between two points is a straight. straight line, right? Well, we can agree that this, the distance between these two is different than the distance of these, right? It's much less. So that's one thing you could do. And there's another thing you could do too, right? You remember I came into high key, I was clean, right? Should I just go ahead and throw it down here? No, I could probably keep the gear up. So I didn't have to configure. So I can maintain a clean configuration on a normal turn maybe until I determine I'm going to hit this at low key. If I find I'm not going to make low key even if I do that, I'm going to make the cut. Okay. So you got some things to think about, don't you? Cool. What if instead of 3,100 feet I come in at 3,600 feet, right here at uh, right here at high key. I mean, do I have time to make a turn? So I can make a 360 degree angle oh, turn? I thought you meant the whole turn. No, um, you don't. Oh, okay. So what can I do now? And by the way, I already threw down my gear, but I can't really throw, throw flaps takeoff just yet, right? Mm -hmm. So I've already got my gear down, but I'm at 3,600 feet at high key. So what can I do? You can slip in the turn. Yeah, you can slip. I agree with that. Make sure you slip into low key here. Cool. Anything else you can do? You can extend your pattern. Absolutely right, right? Again, we're changing geometry, right? If I'm just judging when have my angle of bank when to hit low key, I can extend that out a little bit. And there you go. Because we can agree the inner line here is a shorter distance than the outer one, therefore it gives me more distance to dissipate that energy. In other words, altitude coming down. I agree. All right, cool. Well, you know what? It's just a bad day. I came in, I'm 2,500 feet here at low key. And you know, I wasn't thinking, I just, by habit, I just threw down the gear at high key. All right? So you said, hey, you know what? We're gonna, we, we don't have a choice. We're gonna make our cut and we're gonna get the low key. I, I used my ground checkpoint, yep. And you know, I'm still just don't have the altitude at low key here, right? I'm still at like 1,200 feet. Well, what can I do? You can delay your flaps con uh, configuration. Yeah, okay, so I don't necessarily have to go to flaps takeoff. Yeah, I still get here, it's 77 to 900 feet. I delayed it and now I'm at 400 feet. Am I gonna make it? Probably not, maybe not, right? So, yeah, I could delay configuration, and that might be the answer. But what else could I also do? Um, what do I do here off of high key? You cut the corner. Right, so what can I do off of low key? You can cut the corner. I can cut the corner, right? Okay. So, what am I basically giving you? Tools in your toolbox. Hey, this is happening with my aircraft here, right? You know? I'm at this point on the ground, I've got this airspeed which I should keep, I've got this altitude. What is this showing me at different points? What are my tools, what can I use? 
Okay. Now I got a question for you. I mean, when we're flying an airplane, right? We how many, we don't have that much time to think, right? Sir. Sure. We have very little time to think because we're we're worried about all this stuff, right? Well, what if I walked this on the ground? What if I just walked it out on the ground and imagined myself being high or low or configured or not configured or my engine's failed or my engine's not? What if I did that prior to getting the airplane? And then when I, you know, what would that do once I get in the airplane? It would help you react faster. It would, right? Because again, am I thinking or reacting? You're reacting. I'm reacting, right? And so what you're saying to me, and I totally agree with this, is that on the ground, as I walk this stuff over and over and over again, giving myself I'm high, I'm low, I'm configured, I'm not configured, I've got an engine, I don't, I basically made my decisions on the ground before I get in the plane. So the second it happens, the plane gives me some type of indication or, or something comes up, I've already made that decision. And so I just see it, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to do that. Boom. And as you've already discussed, reaction is significantly taking less brain power and significantly faster in the OODA loop than it is a thought process. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. So what am I getting at? Practice your PELs. Do you have an engine? Do you not? Where? And I can fail the engine anywhere. I do it all the time. I'll fail it in the cross key. I'll fail it at the low key, prior to coming in the high key, I fail it right here half the time. I mean, it's just whatever I, whatever I feel like doing that day, you know. And I'm typically going to fail it when you make a bad decision and you get low or wide or tight or something, okay? Because I like to see you swarm, right? Um, let's say, this is the last case scenario, let's say it, uh, you know, I'm coming in here, and instead of being at seven to nine hundred feet, I'm at twelve hundred feet, halfway through this turn, coming into ninety. Now you have an engine. I'm at twelve hundred feet, and I'm here. What do you normally set your torque to? Four to six. Okay. Is there anything I can do now to try to help me get down? Uh, if you haven't thrown your landing flaps down, you could do that. Or flaps you could, should be at landing, yeah. Or you could pull your PCL to idle and you get that air brake. Right. So if I have, still have an engine, right, I still got a big old air brake I can use, right? Yes, sir. Slap that puppet at idle, and that will help me get down. And I agree. Any time, and I want you, want you to think about this too. The way this ELP pattern was designed to be flown, it was designed to be flown from high key as gear down, flaps up. And from low key inbound, it was designed to be gear down, flaps, takeoff. Okay? So anytime you're at or above your low key altitude here at 1600 feet, it's automatic flaps takeoff. Okay? If you're on profile here and landing is assured, at or above that, it should be flaps landing. Okay? And if you find you're still way high, you have an engine, you can go PCLI. Well, you know what, man? I failed your engine. You don't have that PCL. Any other way I can get down? You can slip very carefully. <laughs> Tell me about that slip. Um, just in your in your right hand turn, put a little uh, left rudder in. Okay, so you're saying if I'm turning right, I'm gonna so wing down top rudder, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Why not wing down bottom rudder? Because uh, that'll tighten your turn. And so here, here you're talking about I'm in a right-hand turn. If I go wing down bottom rudder, it's going to kick the tail out, right? Sure. This air, this wing's now getting more lift. This air, this wing can stall, and what's going to happen? This one stalls, it falls out under. This one's going to keep coming up. And you got to spin, and you're going to auger down, and there will be no time to recover, right? Sure. So imagine as you're turning, hey, my right wing is down. It's got to be the opposite boot. Because if you step on that boot to the inside enough, it's going to be a bad day, right? Yes, sir. Obviously, if it's only you and the plan, you're doing a real PEL, and you do it the wrong way and it departs, man, don't take any time. But pull that thing, okay? But the goal, of course, is to be the hero, save the day, save the plane. So if you're actually high, we don't want to overshoot the runway. Because, hey, that's great. I did a PEL, but, oh, yeah, I ran off over here, still directed in the trees. I still lost the bird. Hey, we're glad to have you, but it would have been nice to have the plane, too, right? Yes, so. 
So here we are, yep, we're back at 1,200 feet, and I don't have an engine, and my last resort is, yes, a slip. Let's talk about that, okay? So here's my normal glide path to the runway, right? But I'm up here at 1,200 feet, and I should be at six to, uh, seven to 900 here, okay? So what would happen to my airspeed if I just dump my nose and get back on profile? Go way up. Go way up, right? I might even overspeed over, over the gear and the flaps, right? Is that really an option that I want to do? Not necessarily. So in a slip, what am I really doing? All right, here's my, here's my wings, right? How much lift do I have right here? 100%, right? Sir. How much lift do I have now? Not as much. Zero, right? So all I am doing then is here's my airplane in a slip. Here's my surface area here. As soon as I turn my wing up this way, now I've stolen, like I no longer have this much lift here, right? Yes, sir. So now I've what, basically cut lift by a third, right? Yes, sir. Well, we already know if I have zero lift, what's gonna happen to the bird? It's gonna drop. It's just gonna fall like a rock, right? So therefore, I'm taking away lift, and I'm doing that by basically turning the wing sideways, but then I'm kicking top rudder, right? And believe it or not, the top rudder is going to pull the, the tail down, okay? Not up. So that slower wing's actually going forward. And then it's basically just going to slice down through the air. And it's going to look like this and this glide. It's basically like taking an elevator and just dropping it down and then coming forward. And that's obviously, truly, it's going to be going forward some. But you're not increasing your airspeed. You're just eliminating the altitude continuing down. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right. So any questions about the different tools that you can use coming into high key, low key, hey, I'm high, I'm low. Um, typically fast should be solved with your nose in general and stuff like that. Any questions about that? Yes, sir. Okay. There's one more technique I want to show you, okay? It's a technique that I like. If you can use it, great. If it doesn't work for you, don't. A lot of IPs like to use this, okay? So we already know that as we're coming around the pattern, right, we should be at what, 125 knots, right? You know, 120, 125 knots based upon our configuration, clean or dirty. What a lot of guys like to do, and I don't disagree with this as always, well, I like to aim slightly short of the runway at 120 knots until I hit a normal three degree glide path. So I'm gonna kinda come down, 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 and then do that. Well, if I'm gear down, flaps down, 120, aiming short of the runway, what is going to happen to my airspeed as I now pull up? Here I am at 120 here. What's going to happen to my airspeed as I now pull up to approach the approach into the numbers? It's going to decrease to your, uh, your final approach. Mm -hmm. So let's imagine my flaps landing, right? And I pull my nose up here at 120. And what airspeed do I want to cross that threshold again at? You want to be... For a normal landing, I'd want to be at what? 100, right? So if I'm aiming short of the runway, I'm at 120, hit my normal 3 degree glide path, and now I pull that nose up, and now I'm aiming for 100 across the threshold, what does that allow me to do? It allows you to hit the 500 foot mark. There you go. And look at that. I'm still landing at the 3 wire, right? Right at being the RDO cart, which gives me a lot of runway to stop the bird. I only got one shot at it, right? Yes, sir. So, I want to do my best to use all the tools available, tight, wide, whatever, to fix the airplane. And then it's certainly nice to have, hey, I'm coming down at 120, pull the nose up, slow to 110 as I cross the threshold. And what am I doing? It's basically an ELP pattern that's real steep until the last little bit, and all of a sudden, hey, I'm just going to go for a normal landing. I'm used to seeing that sight picture, right? Yes, sir. I'm used to, you know, looking at this on a three degree glide path and so that's all I'm doing is just now I go right back to putting the HUD in the middle of the numbers and it's 8.8 point, eight point airspeed like we talked about before and life's good. Make sense? Yes, sir. It's a technique I like to use. If it doesn't work for you, throw it out. No. It's not in the FTI or any of that stuff but I have found it to be effective. Okay? Any questions about the PEL? Different things you can do? Importance to walking it and making those decisions on the ground. So that way when you get in the air, it's just a reaction. Nothing on it? All right, cool. With that,
Let's continue.